Hello everyone. This video is on the Newton Alta assignment for section 12.2, part 2, called Hyperbolas Not Centered at the Origin. Alright, so in this video I'm going to be going over a preview version of this assignment. So please understand that the questions I see in this video may not be the same questions that you see when you work on the assignment yourself, but the objectives are all the same and the structure should be similar. So I'm hoping that watching me do these here helps you in some way when you work on the assignment on your own. Alright, so on your assignment page you should be seeing the title, the mastery bar telling you how far along you've gotten, your objectives, it looks like there are three objectives for this assignment. Under the current objective, there should be a question related to that objective. At the bottom of every question, you should see a feedback button where you can send feedback to Newton if you wish. You will not have this instructor cheat button, but you will have this more instruction button so if you're ever struggling with a topic or a question, click on this and you'll be taken to a page with some reading or some videos to study. And then you'll be given questions related to that instruction. And completing those questions is another way to progress through the assignment. All right. So before I get into any questions, I want to talk about the equation of a hyperbola that's not centered at the origin. But first I want to refer back to section 12.2 part 1 where we were looking at hyperbolas that are centered at the origin. Right, and this is actually what I wrote out in that video. So if, you, if you've seen section 12, my, my section 12.2 part 1 video, you've seen this already. So you had two different versions. One where there was an x squared minus a y squared equals 1 and the other one was the other way around, where it was y squared minus x squared term equals 1. And there were these letters a, b, and c that showed up. Uh, a was the distance from the center to a vertex. Uh, vertices were on this thing called the transverse axis, which if it started with x squared, the transverse axis was the x-axis or horizontal. And if it started with y squared, you know, if it was y squared minus x squared, the transverse axis was vertical, right, or the y-axis. Uh, B was either the rise or the run of the slopes of the asymptotes, right? There's these two slant asymptotes that the curves will, f will tend towards, that the curves will follow, get close to, but not actually touch as you move further away from the center. Uh, and then there was C, which was the distance from the center to a focus. And the relationship you needed to know for all hyperbola was that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And the foci are also on the transverse axis with the, center, with the, with the vertices. And the key thing to finding the vertices, the reason the, 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 the uh, sorry, the foci, the reason the foci are so important is because if you take any point on the hyperbola, any point on either part of the graph, take the distance to one focus and the distance to the other focus and subtract them, you're always going to get the same number. You're always going to get 2 times A. All right. All right. So the only difference between section 12.2 part 1 Right, these pictures here, and 12.2 part 2 is that instead of just x squared and y squared, it's going to be x minus h squared and y minus k squared. Right, and you saw something similar with ellipses as well. Right. So these are hyperbolas not centered at the origin. All right, so hyperboles, well, I mean, they could be centered at the origin if you replace h and k with 0 and 0. Um, but here, here is the standard form equations for hyperbolas centered at, you know, h, at the point h, k. So 
So again, there are two different versions of the standard form equation. One is where you have the x squared term minus the y squared term equals one. So the quantity x minus h squared divided by a squared minus the quantity y minus k squared divided by b squared uh, equals one. And again, on the on the xy plane here, the center is going to be at h k. Right, so here's your here's your center. And then the vertices, right? The tra the transverse axis is going to be horizontal in this case when the when the lead term is, when the positive coefficient term is the x term. the transverse axis, right, the line with the foci and the vertices on it, is horizontal or parallel to the x-axis, if you want to say it that way as well. And remember, A represents the distance to the vertices. So if I go right and left, h plus A, you know, h minus A, there's the vertices. Right, these and these are actually solutions to the equation. These actually belong to the graph. And then B was, you know, going up and down here. K plus B, K minus B. Um, they gave you, you know, they're in the in the assignment. They call them the co-vertices. These are not actually points on the graph. Only the vertices are. What these gave us was a guide for this little box. You might remember this again from section 12.2, part 1. Make this little box here going through the vertices and this co-vertices. And through the corners of the box in the center go the asymptotes, right? these slant asymptotes that the graph of the hyperbola will get to approaching as you move further away from the center. All right, so here are these asymptotes. All right, there's one asymptote and the other. Now, once you have the vertices and the asymptotes in, you can make a pretty rough sketch drawing from the vertices, just having the curves approach these asymptotes as you move further away from the center. Something like that, right? It should be symmetrical about the center as well. Um, now the asymptotes, their slopes, like the slope of this asymptote going up to the right is going to be positive b over a, and then you should be able to write the equation of it. Uh, now they go through the center, right, here's the point hk, so you should be able to use the slope and a point to write an equation for the line. You know, it has the slope b over a, and it passes through the point hk, you should be able to write an equation for that line, right? And I'll, I'll be doing that with examples coming up. And then the slope of this other line is just the opposite. It's negative b over a, right? And passes through the point hk. And again, you'll have to write the equation for that asymptote as well. And then for the foci, right? We need this relationship here. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, right? This is the same thing as in section 12.2, part 1. This is the relationship between C, A, and B for all hyperbolas. And then once you find C, you just move to the right C and left C, so H plus C, H minus C, and there's a focus. I'll call it F1, and here's another focus. I'll call it F2. And again, the whole point of these points being there is, you know, if you were to take any point on the ellipse, or sorry, on the hyperbola, if you were to take any of these points here on the left branch or any of these points here on the right branch, if you were to take any point, take the distance to one focus, the distance to the other focus, and you know, take their, dis their, their difference, it'll always be 2a. It'll always be the same number. And then the other version, you know, instead of having the curves open left and right, instead of the transverse axis being horizontal, is just switching the y and x stuff, right? It's uh, you know y squared minus x squared. The transverse axis will be vertical. The two branches of the hyperbola will open up and down. 
So it'll be the, the quantity y minus k squared over a squared, right? It's still a squared in the beginning, right? Uh, the, the, it doesn't matter what size a and b are. a squared can be less than b squared this time. It's not like an ellipse. Um, it's just the denominator under the positive term is a squared, and the denominator under the negative term is b squared right, for these hyperbolas. So x, y minus k squared divided by a squared minus, and then x minus h squared divided by b squared equals 1. Again, the center is at hk, so h on the x-axis, k on the y-axis, now there's the center. But this time the transverse axis is vertical or parallel to the y-axis. Right, so the vertices and the foci will be above and below the center. All right, and if that's the case, you, know, you go up to k plus a, k minus a, and there are the vertices. Right, these are the actual, actually points on the curve, actual solutions of the equation. And then B units, I'm going to go B units right and left for the co-vertices, H plus B, H minus B. Now, again, I'm putting little black dots there because those are not actually solutions, right? These co-vertices, they, they are, again, only there to help me form this box and draw the asymptotes, right? Again, the asymptotes run through the center and the corners of this box. And the slopes of the asymptotes in this case, right, the slope of this asymptote going up to the right would be, you know, you're going up A, right B, rise over run is A over B this time, not B over A. And the slope of the other asymptote is negative A over B, right, just the opposite. So then you'll have the slopes, and you'll know they go through the point HK, and, you know, when you know the slope and a point, you should be able to write the equation for those asymptotes, both of them. And then now that I have the vertices and the asymptotes, I can make a rough sketch of the hyperbola here with the curves approaching these asymptotes. There's the hyperbola right with the branches opening up and down. And then again the foci, you're using that same relationship, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, but this time you know I go up c and down c, k plus c, k minus c to get to the foci. Right? And here's focus one, here's focus two. So yeah, the foci are always on the transverse axis with the vertices. Also, if you want to think about it this way, the foci are always inside the curves, right? These two branches should curve around the foci. All right. So yeah, very, very similar junk to section 12.2, part 1. But just now, you know, it shifted right, H and, right or left H units and up or down K units, right? Instead of the center being at the origin, it's at some other point HK. All right, so the first objective that we're looking at here is, you know, write the equation of a hyperbola not centered at the origin. So they're giving us some, some information about a hyperbola, right? They're giving us the vertices and the foci, right, the focuses. We should be able to use this information to write an equation in standard form for this hyperbola. So, I'll write out the information they gave us and do some, start doing some drawing on the xy plane. So we're told the vertices are at negative 7, 3, and 1, 3. Alright, so negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, negative seven, three. There's a vertex, which is actually a point on the hyperbola, and actually a solution of the equation I need to write. And the other one's at one, three. All right. So because these are left and right of each other, this is telling me that the transverse axis is horizontal. Uh, I can, you know, the, there'd be a horizontal line going through these.
and if the transverse axis is horizontal, it's that version of the equation where it's x squared first, so x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And I just need to fill in h and k and a and b. I need to know what those are. Now the center, if I know the two vertices, right, the center should be easy enough. The center will be the midpoint, what's exactly halfway between them. Remember how to find the midpoint, so just take the average of the x-coordinates, average of the y-coordinates. So negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3. And then of course the average of the y-coordinates is 3. So negative 3, 3 <coughs> is the center. So the negative 3 is h, positive 3 is the k. I'm going to pop those in. All right, so we have x minus negative 3, but that would be x plus 3 squared divided by a squared, which I'll find in a minute, minus, and then y minus k. k is the y coordinate of the center, right? y minus 3 squared divided by b squared, which again I'll find in a minute, equals 1. So I start filling some stuff in. All right, well, we're also told the foci. All right, the focuses, the foci are at negative 11, 3, and 5, 3. All right, so 8, 9, 10, 11, there's negative 11, 3, there's a focus. I'll just call it, you know, I won't even call it anything. And then uh, 5, 3. There's another focus. Right. Now I just, you know, I need to get the asymptotes in there. I need to know the co-vertices, make that box, what are the asymptotes and all that. Um, well, from this picture, I can tell you the value of A. Remember, the value of A is the distance from the center to a vertex. So the value of A is, you know, how far is it from negative 3, 3, to 1, 3, that's 4 units. Or from negative 3, 3 to negative 7, 3. Either way, the value of a is 4, meaning that the value of a squared is 16, and that's going to go underneath the x plus 3 squared. So I'm just slowly filling in this equation. So we have x plus 3 squared over 16, minus, and now I just need b squared, but I don't have that here. But what I do have is the value of c. All right, the distance from the center to a focus, so either negative 11, 3 to negative 3, 3, or negative 3, 3 to, to 5, 3, which is 8 units. So the value of c is 8, meaning the value of c squared is 64. And if you recall, right, c squared for a hyperbola is going to be equal to a squared plus b squared and I know a squared is 16. So we have 64 equals 16 plus b squared, and then I can just subtract 16, we get b squared equals um, 48, and that's b squared. That's going to be in the denominator underneath the y minus 3 squared. And there you go. I mean, this is all they want, is the equation. But let me actually, I'm going to go through and finish it all and make a drawing and identify the asymptotes because you're going to need to do that for all these, a bunch of these anyway. Um, so if b squared is 48, then b is the square root of 48. And this is 4 times 12, so that's 2 times the square root of 12. Actually, that's 16 times 3, so this is 4 times the square root of 3. Now the square root of 48 is a little under 7 units, so if I want those co-vertices, right, from the center I go up square root of 48. So here's 10, you know, up, up 7, a little under that would be the square root of 48. So here's, here's 3 plus 4 root 3, right, and that's going to be where Again, I'm going to put a little dot here that doesn't actually belong. That's not a solution. That is not a solution to this equation. But it's a guide. 
and then down the square root of 48. So here's negative 4. Uh, just above that, just above that would be 3 minus 4 root 3. And then you got below the center, there's the other co-vertex. And then I can make this rectangle here. And then the asymptotes go through the corner and through the center. All right, through the corner and through the center. There's the asymptotes. Now the equations of these asymptotes, I'm going to put them in point slope form. You know, they both contain this point here. So remember for this one, it'll be y minus 3 equals the slope of this line would be, you know, I rose 4 root 3 and ran uh, 4. And I went up 4 root 3 and right 4 so it's 4 root 3 over 4. The 4's would cancel. You just have the square root of 3 as a slope. And then times x minus negative 3 or x plus 3. There's that asymptote in point slope form. Right. This was in point slope form if you remember the, how to write the equations of lines. Right. So there's that asymptote. And then the other asymptote is just with the negative slope. y minus 3 equals negative square root of 3. Right, The slope of this line would be negative square root of 3 times x plus 3. Right, and then now that I've got the asymptotes in, the vertices in, I can make a rough sketch. You know, just have the curves approaching these asymptotes. And then what I'm going to double, uh, double check too is I'm going to put this in that Desmos site and see how much of this actually works. Actually, should it looks good. So on a free, on, it's a free online graphing calculator, Desmos.com. Uh, I'm going to write the equation we ended up writing. You know, I said it was going to be x plus 3 squared divided by 16 minus, and then the quantity y plus uh, y minus 3 squared divided by 48 equals 1. And you see this, you see a hyperbola showing up. All right, and I'll plot the, you know, the vertices are at negative 7, 3. See that? Definitely the vertex. And then the other one was at 1, 3. So definitely the vertex of that other curve. And the center should be at negative 3, 3. And it definitely looks like that's in the middle, ha halfway between them. And right, it looks pretty good so far. Uh, then the asymptotes. Right, now I'm going to, again, I'm just going to put the asymptotes in point slope form for right now. We might be asked to put them in slope intercept form later, which shouldn't be that much of a problem. But, you know, y minus 3 equals, you know, the slope was the square root of 3 for the one line times the quantity x plus 3. And you see that blue line pop in. Run it. It goes through the center. goes through the center. has a slope of the square root of 3. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this. and change the slope from po you know, positive root 3 to negative root 3 for the other one. Change those lines to be different colors. Let's have them be orange and dashed. Alright, All right, there we go. So the two green curves are my actual hyperbola. Those are actual solutions of the equation. And you'll see that the two asymptotes I drew through the center here with the slope of positive square root of 3 and negative square root of 3 as you zoom out, you'll see the green curve actually gets closer and closer to becoming those two lines. Right? It doesn't actually touch them. Right? It looks like it touches them, but if you zoom in close enough, you'll see the curve doesn't actually hit the asymptote ever. All right. But that looks pretty good. All right? That looks like a proper hyperbola with its asymptotes. So back on the assignment, you know, we were asked to choose, you know, just make a selection here. So I had x plus 3 squared over 16 minus y minus 3 squared over 48 equals 1. So that is this option here. This is the equation of the hyperbola they described to us. And then after you submit an answer, it'll tell you if you're right or wrong, right, and then give you some sort of answer explanation. Please read through the answer explanations, you know, just to make sure you understand why something was correct or incorrect and hopefully you can learn from your mistakes for future questions.
Okay, and this is what I'm going to be doing pretty much for like at least a few of them until I'm hoping you get the hang of it of watching me do this. Uh, so I'll graph out a few of these by hand and you know, identify the the center, the vertices, the foci, the asymptotes, draw the curves. Um, but then after a bunch, hopefully we can do it without having to draw too much. All right. Uh, the next question is on the same objective. And once again, I'm given the vertices and the foci asked to write an equation of the hyperbola in standard form. So very, very similar question. Just, of course, going to have a different center. So the information I'm given this time, again, I'll start, I'll draw some things up for this, this example, make a little XY plane over here. If you have graph paper, that might be nice, but again, I'm going to go to Desmos after this and look at a better picture. All right, so again, we're told the vertices and the foci. The vertices are at 3, 1 and 3, negative 9. All right, so 3, 1. There's a vertex. That's a point that's actually on the hyperbola, actually a solution of the equation we're going to draw. And then 3, negative 9. All right, so this time, the line going through the vertices is vertical, right? The, the transverse axis is vertical, is parallel to the y-axis. All right, and if that's the case, the equation we're going to be writing is going to be a y squared minus x squared equation. y minus k squared divided by a squared minus, and then x minus h squared divided by b squared equals 1. This is the equation. I, I just need to fill in h and k and a and b. Alright, well the center is easy enough as well. Alright, the center should be exactly halfway between these, which will be at 3, negative 4. So, that's exactly halfway between, you know, 5 below, five, uh, uh, you know, 5 up for 1, 5 down for 1, right? the average. So h is 3, k is negative 4. So I'll have y plus 4 squared minus, and then there's an x minus 3 squared. Right? I just need to find a and b now. Alright, and the foci. The foci are given as 3, 2, and 3, negative 10. So 3, 2, there's a focus. Just put it in black here, and then 3, negative 10. There we go. And then the, the curves will curve around the foci. Right? I just need to figure out, you know, where these asymptotes are so I know how to better draw the, the hyperbola. Alright, so the value of A is simple enough. Again, that's the distance from the center to a vertex, and I said that was 5 units. So A squared is 25. Right, so that's going to be the denominator here under the y, my, uh, y plus 4 squared term. And then C, right, C is again the distance from the center to a focus, which is 6 units. Right? The distance from the center to either focus is 6 units. All right, so like before, C will have C squared is 36, but that should be equivalent to A squared plus B squared right, in, in, in a hyperbola. And we know that a squared is 25, so we have 36 equals 25 plus b squared. So b squared must be 11, and then we have the equation. Right? I know h is 3, k is negative 4, a squared is 25, and I know now that b squared must be 11. So the equation of the hyperbola is going to be this, you know, y minus negative 4, or y plus 4 squared divided by a squared divided by 25 minus x minus h or x minus 3 squared divided by b squared is 11 equals 1. This is the equation. This is all they want right here. All right. 
Now I'm going to continue on though, right? Um, even though I can stop, you know, that's all they wanted. Now if b is b squared is 11, b is the square root of 11, which is between three and four units. So from the center, if I want those co-vertices, I go between three and four units. So one, two, three, four to the right. So between six and seven, there's three plus the square root of 11. And there's gonna be a co-vertex there to the right of the center. And then between three and four units to the left, so one, one, two, three, four. So between negative one and zero, there should be three minus the square root of 11, and there's a co-vertex there. And then I make that little box, you know, going through the vertices and co-vertices. Again, I put the I put the co-vertices in a different color because they're not actually solutions. They're not actually on the hyperbola. And then through the corner of the boxes, corners of the boxes in the center, you got one asymptote and the other asymptote. And then, you know, the slopes of these asymptotes and rise over run. Uh, the rise here is 5. Right, from the center I go up 5, and then the run is the square root of 11. So we have, I'm going to put the equations in point slope form again. And I know they both go through the point 3, negative 4. So y plus 4 equals 5 divided by the square root of 11 times x uh x minus 3. There's the equation of that asymptote in point slope form. And then the other one is y plus 4 equals negative 5 over the square root of 11 times x minus 3. And there's the, you know, the equation of that other asymptote. Now that I have all the asymptotes, the foci, the vertices in, you know, through the vertices I can draw these curves that are approaching the asymptotes as we move away from the center. So something like this. And there you go. Let's check it out. Let's just see if, see if my asymptotes are good and everything with this equation. So to the Desmos site. And I'll clear all this stuff. All right, go back home. Uh, so the equation I entered, you know, the equation I wrote was the quantity y plus 4 squared divided by 25 minus the quantity x minus 3 squared divided by 11 equals 1. And there's one branch and another branch should be down here. Now look, the vertices are at 3, 1, which they gave us, and 3, negative 9. Look at that. The center is obviously at 3, negative 4. I'll plot that point. All right, definitely halfway between. And I'm going to plot the asymptotes. All right. And I'll put the equations in just that point slope form. So y plus 4 equals, you know, 1 had a slope of 5 over the square root of 11 times, oops, let me get that out of the denominator there, times x minus 3. And you see that line going through the center. And then I'll just copy and paste this. And just change the slope to negative 5 over the root 11. And you see it going through the center. And I'll make those the same color and dashed, dashed lines. All right, great. And again, you see uh, the, the purple curve is the hyperbola, the two purple branches. And if I zoom out, you'll see that that purple curve gets closer and closer to actually becoming, you know, it doesn't actually become, but it gets close to it. It gets so, it gets so close to it that it looks like it actually becomes those two asymptotes. Right. But in fact, it doesn't. Right? If you zoom in close enough, you'll see, you know, the purple curve doesn't actually touch the red dot, red dotted line. Right. But that looks pretty good. You know, that looks like the hyperbola I drew, with the proper asymptotes. Center's correct. All right. So back to the assignment. Just pick the correct one. We had y plus four squared over twenty-five minus x minus 3 squared over 11 equals 1. This is very first option here. Great. And again, please read through the answer explanations. Now notice, you know, they don't even look at a graph. They don't even make a graph here. And you don't have to. Right? A lot of these you shouldn't even, you know, if you get enough practice in, hopefully you get, understand what's happening. You know, after a while, you shouldn't have to draw the hyperbola to to say what's going on.
that. So this one's graph a hyperbola, not center at the origin from the equation in standard form. So this one, they're giving us an equation and asking us to graph. Now we just have to move, you know, change the green point to change the orientation. You know, do the curves open left and right, or do they open up and down? All right, that's what the green point does. And then we just move the center, move the vertices and co-vertices to, you know, form that box where the asymptotes would run through. Um, so that we get the proper graph. Right? So once again, I'll draw this one by hand. Maybe we'll look at it, look at it in Desmos again as well. All right, so this one has the quantity x plus 3 squared minus y minus 1 squared uh, divided by 9 equals 1. All right, so the hk, the center. Now remember that the number being subtracted from x is the h, the number being subtracted from y is the k. So x plus 3 is really x minus negative 3, so negative 3 is the x coordinate of the center, and y minus 1, well 1 is the y coordinate of the center. Uh, another way to think about this, like I did with ellipses and circles in previous videos, just think about what value of x would give you 0 squared here, and then what value of y would give you 0 squared here. If x were negative 3 and y were 1, you'd have 0 and 0. There's your center. Now don't be, you know, just be careful, alright? Uh, this is not actually a solution. Right? If x were negative 3 and y were 1, you'd have 0 minus 0 equals 1. That's not true. All right, this is just a guide, a guiding point. All right, so negative 3, 1 for the center. Put a little dot there. All right, now the value of a squared is 1. Value of a squared is 1, because technically you can always do a divided by 1. Right? So the value of a is 1, and since it's an x squared minus y squared, you know, the, the transverse axis will be horizontal. So I'll go right and left one unit for the vertices. So right one unit from the center, left one unit from the center, those are the vertices. The vertices will be at you know negative four one and negative two one, and you can check these out. These should actually be solutions of the equation. Replace x with negative four and y with one, or replace x with negative two and y with one, and you'll get one minus zero equals one, which is true. Right? These are actually solutions. Right. Now the value of b squared is the other denominator, that's 9, right? so the value of b would be 3, and from the center I go up 3, and then down 3, and these take me to those co-vertices, which I will not write. All right, they might ask you for them, but you know, negative 3, 4, and negative 3, negative 2, these are not solutions of the equation. So I'm not going to write them, I'm just going to use them as a guide. Make that little box going through the, the co-vertices and the vertices. And then the asymptotes right, go through the corners of this box and through the center. So there's one asymptote and then the other asymptote. Again, this doesn't look great, but now the slope of this one asymptote Remember, you're going up 3, b is 3 and a is 1, so you go up 3, right 1 here, the slope is 3. And the slope of this other line is negative 3. Right? And they go through the point negative 3, 1. So you could write the equations for these lines in point-slope form. Right? y minus 1 equals 3 times the quantity x, x plus 3. Or, you know, they might ask you for sometimes the... Uh, they might ask you for the asymptotes in slope-intercept form. If I distribute the 3 and then add 1, we get y equals 3x plus 10. 
right. There's a line with a slope of 3 with the point negative 3, 1 on it. And then this other line with a slope of negative 3, the other asymptote, would be y minus 1 equals negative 3 times x plus 3. And then again, you could also put it in slope-intercept form, distribute the negative 3, and then add 1, y equals negative 3x uh, minus 8. Right. Negative 3x minus 8. And this would also have the point negative 3, 1 on it, right, and the slope of negative 3. All right, so I've got the asymptotes, I've got the vertices, you know, we can draw it now. A little rough sketch, you know, make sure the curves are approaching the asymptotes. These little, like, U-shaped curves, these branches. And there's your graph. All right, now, and I'll put a little little dots here for the co-vertices, even though they don't belong. Now, if you want the foci as well, <coughs> we need to find c, and remember the c squared is a squared plus b squared, which in this case would be 1 plus 9, which is 10. So c is the square root of 10, and I would be moving to the right and left. Now, the square root of 10 is between 3 and 4 units. So between 0 and 1, there's negative 3 plus the square root of 10. So here's a focus. You know, square root of 10 units to the right of the center. And 1, 2, 3, 4. And then between uh, negative, negative 6 and negative 7, here's negative 3 minus the square root of 10, you know, comma 1. That'd be the other focus. So here's a f for focus, f for focus. So the foci would be at, you know, negative 3, 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus, square root of 10, comma 1, right? You're just taking the center and I'd be adding and subtracting the square root of 10 to the x-coordinate of the center for the foci. All right, but again, they don't need all that. They just want a graph. They just want a graph. And I'm not going to go to Desmos for this one. So first, I need the curves to open left and right, not up and down, right? So like that, just move the green dot onto the, <coughs> the uh, x-axis there, and now you got the curves, the branches opening right and left the transverse axis is horizontal, then the center would be at negative 3, 1. So I'll move that middle point to negative 3, 1. And then the vertices, you know, one of these vertices is at negative 2, 1. So there we go. And then these co-vertices, you know, the, the tops of the box and bo top and bottom of this box should be three units away from the center. So not negative 3, 4, you know, negative 3, 3, but negative 3, 4. So there we go. This is it. All right. And perhaps I should actually go to Desmos. I'm sorry. Let me just, just to double check my asymptotes, make sure everything works out, right? Where we're given x plus 3 squared minus, and then the quantity y minus 1 squared divided by 9 uh, equals 1. And then my two asymptotes, well, the center was at negative 3, 1, I mean, you can see the center there. And then the asymptotes, I'll put them in the slope-intercept form. y equals 3x plus 10 was one of them, and y equals negative 3x minus 8 was the other. And I'll make those the same color and dashed. All right, and that looks pretty good, actually. You know, the green curve is approaching these red dotted lines as you move away, and you can see it as you zoom out. It looks like those green curves basically just blend with the red dotted line. They don't actually touch them, but, you know, they're, they're close enough that it looks like they are. All right, so we're pretty good. We're pretty good. So this is a good graph. So this one, another graph, which, again, I'll, I'll do by hand first right, for, for the first couple of each objective, and then I'll stop doing that. So let me write this equation out. The quantity y minus 1 squared over 16 minus the quantity x minus 2 
squared divided by 25 equals 1. Right, so the HK, right, the center. Now be careful. Too often people just go left to right and be like, oh, 1 and then 2. 1, 2, but no. It, 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 whatever goes with Y is the K, and whatever goes with X is the H. So this is x minus 2, the, the, the h is 2, and then y minus 1, the k is 1, right? So the center is 2, 1, not 1, 2. Be careful. Pay attention to where x is and where y is. All right, so the center is at 2, 1. Put a little dot where the center is. Then a squared is 16, right? a squared is 16, so a is 4. And, you know, this is a y squared minus x squared. This is under the y, so I go up and down for the vertices. The, the transverse axis is vertical. So up 4. Oops. Uh, up, add 4 to 1, that's 5. So here's a vertex, 2, 5. And then go from the center down 4. And there's another vertex at 2, negative 3, right? So the vertices are at 2, 5, and 2, negative 3. All, right, all I did was add 4 and subtract 4 to the y coordinate of the center. Uh, b squared is the other denominator under the negative term, right? 25. So b is 5. So again, from the center, I go right 5. So 2 plus 5 is 7. So 7, 1 is a co-vertex. Now, this is not a solution. The vertices are solutions. Check it out. Plug it in the equation. 7, 1 is not a solution. And then I go left 5 as well. All right, so negative 3, 1. This is not a solution. Right. And once I got those, I can make the little box through the co-vertices and vertices. And through the corners of those box in the center are the asymptotes. All right, now the slopes of these asymptotes, you know, remember from the center I went up four and then right five. So four fifths, slopes four fifths. So one asymptote is, you know, y minus one equals 4 fifths times x minus 2 if I put it in point slope form. And you can distribute the 4 fifths and then add 1, get it in slope intercept form as well, that's fine. And then down here, this other line is y minus 1 equals negative 4 fifths times x minus 2. And again, you can put that in slope intercept form if you want as well. And now that I have the vertices and asymptotes in, the curve is going to be nice and wide like this, approach, you know, approaching the asymptotes, kind of using the box as a guide, too. Yeah, something like that. There's the curve. And and then for the you know, foci, if, if I was asked to find them, c squared is a squared plus b squared. That's 16 plus 25, which is 41. So C is the square root of 41, which is between 6 and 7 units. And I'm going up and down, right? So if I go up 6 units, or between 6 and 7 units, it's going to be between 7 and 8. Right? Between 7 and 8 should be uh, 1 plus the square root of 41. And there's a focus. Put an F next to it. And then subtract square root of 41 from the y coordinate of the center, take me down between six and seven units. So that's uh, that's four, five, six, seven. So between negative five and negative six, there's one minus the square root of forty-one, and there's another focus. Right. Put another f next to it. But the foci, again, you're just taking the coordinates of the center, and we'll be adding and subtracting the square root of 41 to the y coordinate. So 2, comma, and then 1 plus or minus the square root of 41. There's where the foci are. All right. And again, all they want is the graph, though. All right. I'm just doing all this other stuff because, you know, you're going to have to at some point. All right, so I need the curves opening up and down, which they already are, so I don't need to move this green point. Uh, 
Then the center is at 2, 1. So move this to 2, 1. There, it's labeled. Uh, one of the vertices is at 2, 5, not 2, 3. So move this up. Remember that was A, A was 4. And B was 5. So this other co-vertex thing should be 5 units to the right. So not at 4, 1, but at 7, 1. Right. And again, that's not a solution. Notice it's not on the blue curves. Right. And this should be good. Everything, all the information's in there. The center's correct. The value of A is 4. The value of B is 5. Vertices are correct. Asymptotes should be right. Even though the asymptotes aren't labeled, they should be correct. Great. And again, if you want to go to Desmos and check that stuff out, you're more than welcome. All right. All right. So now we get to it. All right. So I'll do this here, where you know you don't even have to draw it. I'll draw the first couple again, but you don't have to draw it to identify the vertices and the foci and the asymptotes and whatnot. All right, so they're not even putting it in slope-intercept form. It looks like it looks like they took point-slope form and then just solve for y, just add the constant to the other side. But here they're asking us to find the asymptotes of this hyperbola. So I'll write it out. So this equation in standard form, hyperbola is you know x plus one squared divided by thirty-six minus y minus two squared uh, divided by sixteen equals one. So again, the center negative one for the h k. And x plus 1 is the same as x minus negative 1, so negative 1 for x, and then y minus k, y minus 2. So negative 1, 2 is the center. All right, there's the center. a squared is 36. All right, so a is, a is 6, and that takes me to the vertices. Now, I'd be... You know, this is the transverse axis is horizontal. This is an x squared minus y squared. So I'm going to be adding and subtracting 6 to the x coordinate of the center. So negative 1 plus 6 is 5, 2. And negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7, 2. And so, again, from the center, right 6, 5, 2 is a vertex. And then left 6 negative 7, 2 is another vertex. And those, again, are actually solutions of the equation. Plug in those x values and y value of 2, and you'll get a true statement. All right, then b squared is the other denominator under the, under the negative term. And so b squared is 16. So b is 4. All right, so those co-vertices are 4 units up and down. And I'm not going to write them. I'm just going to put a dot there. So up 4. So negative 1, 6 is a co-vertex. Again, not a solution, though. Not a solution. And then down 4. So negative 1, negative 2 is another co-vertex. But again, not a solution. I'm just putting little dots there. So we have a nice guide for the box. The box going through the vertices and co-vertices. And this is a dotted box because, you know, again, the, bo the box isn't even part of the hyperbola. And neither are the asymptotes, right? The asymptotes running through the corner and through the cent the corners in the center. These two asymptotes, right? And again, it's a bad drawing. It should run through the center, through the point negative 1, 2. And now that I've got the vertices and asymptotes up, I can make a rough sketch of the draw of the of the hyperbola. Something like this. But they want the asymptotes though. Now the slopes of these asymptotes, right, you know, from the center, remember I went up 4 to get to the co-vertices, and I went up and down 4, and then to go to the vertices, I went, you know, 6, right and left 6. So up 4, right 6, rise over 1 is 4, 6, which is 2 thirds. So y minus 2 equals 2 thirds times x plus 1, and then you can add 2, 
and the other one is y minus 2 equals negative 2 thirds times x plus 1 in point slope form. And then again, they're, they're just adding 2. So the asymptotes, the way they're writing them, is y equals, you know, plus or minus 2 thirds times x plus 1, right? They both have that, one with positive 2 thirds, one with negative 2 thirds, and then just get y alone by adding 2 to both sides. There's, this is what they want. And they don't ask for the foci. You could easily find the foci. You need to find c squared and then find c and all that. But uh, that is uh, plus or minus y equals plus or minus two thirds times the quantity x plus one plus two. That's the second option here. Great. Okay. So another one of these. What are the asymptotes? All right, so this is very similar. Uh, basically, the number under the y is going to help you find the rise of the slopes. The number under the x is going to help you find the run of the slopes. So the rise will be 6. The run will be 4. So the slopes will be plus or minus 6 fourths or plus or minus 3 halves. And then you're going to have the x plus 2. And then y minus 2 on the other side, but then you add 2. y equals plus or minus uh, plus or minus 3 halves times x plus 2 and then plus 2 after. Uh, so that's this here. And again, very similar. That would have been very similar to the last example if I wrote it out. All right, so this one's just identifying the vertices. So the center is at one, uh, negative 2 for x, 1 for y. Oh, and the foci. All right, I'll write this one out. All right, I'm not going to draw the picture though this time. You can go to Desmos and look at a picture. Uh, but we have you know y minus one squared over four minus, and then x plus two squared over twenty uh, forty five. Sorry, equals one. So again, the center is going to be at negative 2 for x. Just pay attention to where x and y are, and positive 1 for y. a is 2, and I'm going to be going up and down right, for the vertices. I'm just going to put a up and down little arrows there. So I just add and subtract 2 to the y coordinate of the center to get the vertices. Right, so the vertices of this hyperbola be negative 2, and then... 1 plus 2 is 3, and negative 2, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So there are the vertices. And then c squared, remember, is a squared plus b squared for a hyperbola. That's going to be 50, 4 plus 45. So c is the square root of 50, which will simplify to the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. So 5 times the square root of 2. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm going up and down from the center this many units to get to the foci. So negative 2 and then 1 plus or minus 5 root 2. Right? 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus. And this is what they want us to enter. Uh, I think we do, they do want two separate ones though. So 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus. So back on the assignment, right? the vertices are... I'm going to put some ordered pairs here. One's at negative 2, comma 3. Uh, the other one, negative 2, negative 1. And the foci, one's at negative 2, comma, and then 1 plus the square root of 50, 1 plus 5 root 2. Get out of there. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this into the next box and change this plus to a minus. Oh, what happened? Oh, wow. Yeah, I caught it. Did you catch it? You were probably yelling at me this whole time. I apologize. Yeah. I rushed this, didn't I? c squared is, you know, a squared plus b squared. 4 plus 45 is 49, not 50. 
and then c would be 7, not 5 root 2. Wow, so 1 plus or minus 7. So the foci would be at negative 2, 8, and negative 2, negative 6. That's what I should be entering. I am so sorry. But at least they're giving me another shot here. All right, so I can fix this up. Negative 2, 8, and negative 2, negative 6. Again, I do apologize. I rushed the value of c squared. And there, there's a, there's a lesson for you, right? Don't don't rush your work. Double check your work, right? I should have double checked it before I submitted. But that should be better. Wonderful. All right, so again, my apologies. You know, for I, I rushed the value of c squared there. Hopefully, uh, you'll learn from my mistake. All right, so moving on. All right, so one more of these. So again, this time they're just wanting the asymptotes. Again, the number under the y is going to help you with the rise of the slopes. The number under the x is going to help you with the run. So the rise is going to be 8. The run will be 5. So plus or minus 8 fifths. Right? So I'm going to have y equals, and they're telling you how to enter them right here. Right? y equals plus or minus. And then the slopes of these lines will be positive 8 fifths, negative 8 fifths, times, and the value, you know, just x plus 3, there's x plus 3 squared there, you know, the, 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 the center will be at negative 3 for x, negative 4 for y. And then y plus 4 would be on the other side, so I'd have to subtract 4. Or you'd have a y plus 4 on the left if you were doing point slope form. And then you subtract 4 to get it in the form they want. So here's the two asymptotes, and again, you can graph this, graph these asymptotes, and see that they actually work together in conjunction with each other. Great. Alright, so that objective's done. Alright, write the equation of hyperbola. Alright, so we're just filling in some boxes here. Alright, so I'm going to just talk this one out. So I see negative 4, 7 and negative 4, negative 9 are the vertices. So the center would have an x value of negative 4, and the average of 7 and negative 9 would be negative 1. So negative 4, negative 1. And these are above and below each other, right? They have the same x value. So they'd be on a vertical line. So we're starting off with the y's. It's going to be a y squared minus x squared. So y minus negative 1 or y plus 1 squared divided by some number minus and then x minus negative 4, or x plus 4 squared, divided by some number. Now I just need to know what a squared and b squared are. Alright, now the distance between, you know, negative 4, negative 1, and, you know, negative 4, negative 9 is 8 units. So a is 8, meaning a squared is 64, so there's going to be 64 under the first denominator here. And then the distance from negative 4, negative 1 to negative 4, negative 10 is 9 units, so c squared is 80, c is 9, c squared is 81, uh, 81 minus 64 would be b squared, right, because c squared equals a squared plus b squared, you just subtract a squared from c squared, 81 minus 64 is 17, so b squared is 17, that's going to be the other denominator, and there you go, y plus 1 squared divided by 64 minus x plus 4 squared divided by 17 equals 1, that would have these vertices, these foci, and you know have a vertical um, transverse axis and all that. All right. Great. So again, see with some practice. Now again, I know I said don't rush, but you know th again this video is over an hour long. You've seen me do a bunch of examples already. I'm kind of getting bored with this. Um, just you know, you sh with enough practice, hopefully you'll be able to do it like I can here. And if you want to write it out, of course, write it out. It never hurts. All right, so another one here where, again, we're given the foci, the vertices. All right, so 2, 5, 2, negative 3 are the vertices. So 2, 1 would be the center. And again, they have the same x-coordinate. So you have a vertical transverse axis. So it's going to start off with a y. y minus 1 squared divided by some number. And the center is going to be, again, at 2, 1. So x minus 2 squared you have x minus 2 squared, y minus 1 squared, but it's going to be y squared minus x squared. All right, then a squared. 
you know, 2, 1 to 2, 5 is 4 units, that distance. So A is 4, A squared is 16, so you have 16 under the, under the first denominator. And then 2, 1 to 2, 10 is 9 units. So C is 9, C squared is 81, A squared is 16, 81 minus 16 uh, would be 65, and that would be B squared. So you have y minus 1 squared over 16 minus x minus 2 squared over 65 equals 1. That hyperbola has these vertices, these foci, and yeah. Wonderful. So again, I know I'm talking them out loud, but you know, again, you can read through the answer explanations here, pause the video, whatever, and, and while I'm scrolling through and check it out yourself. But you know, I've, I've written out a bunch of these before, early on. You, sh you shouldn't be too bad after a while. All right, this is his graphing. The center would be at one negative one, and you know the the transverse axis would be horizontal because it's x minus y, right? X squared minus y squared. So I need the curves to open left and right. There we go. Transverse axis is horizontal now. The center is at one negative one. Right? Center is at one one for x, negative one for y. The vertices should be two units, right? The square root of four, two units to the right and left of the center. So one negative one, yeah, three negative one is a, is a vertex. So the vertices are in the correct place. And then those co-vertices, right? The top and bottom of the box should be five units above the square root of 25, right? Five units above the center, above and below. So one negative one, you know, go up five, they'll be at one four. And there you go, right? There, there's the proper hyperbola. And I should have just one more of those, which I guess, in my opinion, the graphing should be the easiest, especially if it's already in standard form like these are. All right, so negative 3 for x, negative 1 for y for the center. And it'll have a vertical, all right, it's y squared minus x squared. It'll have a vertical transverse axis, so the orientation's correct already. The curves are opening up and down. It has a vertical transverse axis. Uh, the center will be at negative 3 for x, negative 1 for y. All right, so negative 3 for x negative one for y, there's the center. And then under the y, you know, you have four. Square root of four is two, so I go up two, down two for the vertices, which is already done. That negative three, one is a proper vertex, that's two units above the center. And then for the co-vertices, you know, the b squared is one, so b is one, I go right one, left one. So there, now I go right one, left one, I get on that box, create the box, you know, you could, Again, the asymptotes aren't drawn. You could draw the asymptotes, but this should be the proper hyperbola for that for that graph, for that equation. Great. All right. So sorry if I you know felt rushed at the end there, but I just you know anytime the video goes over an hour, I'm like I feel like I've done enough in the early on part to where you could you, you saw me write enough, you saw me do enough in 12.2 part one as well uh, to help you get through these uh, hyperbola problems. And that should be it for this preview version of this assignment. Like I said at the top of the video, you know, the, the questions I saw here may not be the same questions that you see when you work on the assignment yourself. But the objectives are all the same. The structure should be similar. So I'm hoping that watching me or listening, listening to me do these here helps you out in some way when you work on the assignment yourself. And thank you very much for watching.